by the Ed and Don DeCarbo Funeral Home and Crematory Incorporated with two locations, 941 South Mill Street, Newcastle and 3000 Wilmington Road, Neshanic Township.
Dan, good to see you. Well, welcome everyone. Very grateful for your presence here this evening. Uh, this is a very, very important meeting. It's been a lot of work going into research and study, so I'm very grateful to everyone who participated in that. I'm especially grateful this evening to Melanie and Sister Annie for their hard work with the technology and putting the program together. Our pastoral and finance council, you recognize a number of their names and voices in the presentation. In fact, I'd like the pastoral and finance council to please stand so that you can all see who they are. So we're very, very grateful to all their hard work. Uh, we've been going over this for quite some time. I'd like to also point out our regional vicar, Father John. Father John over here, welcome. Good to have you with us. Father John Gisler. He has been a tremendous help to us in these past few years, trying to pull everything together. And I believe Dr. Linda Ritzert may show up at some point. I believe she's on her way, so she'll be in our midst as well. And of course, we have the two young ones here, Father Brendan and Father Ben, so grateful for your presence. They're actually sitting next to each other. That's kind of impressive. I said, they're, they're holding the, each other here. <laughs> when one goes to get up there. So we, we've been dealing with this for quite some time. There's an enormous amount of information. So what we're going to do tonight is invite you to listen closely, to try to absorb it all. But because there's so much and it's gonna take us a while to get through it all, we're not gonna discuss it this evening. The discussion about what you're going to be dealing with this evening, we're going to do next Thursday evening at 6.30 at St. Mary's in the hall, the Holy Spirit Parish Hall. We'll, we'll gather there next week, and that gives you tonight and throughout this week to go back and look at it again. You might want to fast forward to an area of the presentation that you want more clarity on. So what did they say? What is that number? How does that figure? So you can go back and look at it. So it's not really productive to try to have a conversation if you don't really have had the opportunity to understand all the information. So tonight is information. Next week, we will discuss it, okay? I think in God's divine providence, we are doing this, and it just so happened this way, during this sacred time between the Ascension and Pentecost Sunday, birthday of the church and feast day of our parish. And I spoke to you before about the idea that the first novena ever was between the Ascension and Pentecost with the Blessed Mother and Disciples praying for the gift of the Spirit that our Lord promised. So this evening, this Thursday is the seventh day of the Novena, and the gift tonight is for wisdom, and how appropriate that is. So as we begin this evening, we're going to pray the prayer of the Novena for tonight, which is about wisdom, and then when we're finished with the prayer, the presentation will begin. For the unity and well-being of Holy Spirit perish, that we might do the will of God, please add your own intentions. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. Send forth your spirit. The gift of wisdom is nothing less than the loving contemplative union with God, which makes 
it possible for us to see all things from a divine perspective? When it is understood in its fullest breath, wisdom can rightly be called communion, since it is a share in divine life, a union made perfect in the truth of love. Embodying all the other gifts as charity embraces all the other virtues, wisdom is the most perfect of the gifts. It strengthens our faith, fortifies hope, perfects charity, and promotes the practice of virtue in the highest degree. May the Holy Spirit raise up our hearts and minds to rest in God alone, so that we, his people, may be living signs of a new Pentecost in our time. Let us pray. Father, who by the strength of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. May he permeate our thoughts, words, and actions so that bearing witness to the gift of salvation your church and may lead all people to Christ, the way, the truth, and the life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Mary, seed of wisdom. Four short years, one big mission. Unite seven parishes into one. On July 1st, 2019, Father Joseph McCaffrey accomplished this goal and established one parish, Holy Spirit Parish. Right away, we developed our mission statement and began bringing together many diverse ministries and groups. Collaboration, hard work, and fun became the norm. Even a pandemic couldn't stop us. We held parking lot masses, drive through confessions, and expanded our food pantry. Now we enter a new phase of unity as we forge a vision for our future. We need the active participation of every Catholic in Lawrence County to make our vision a reality. Our appeal is to embrace this vision with the end in mind. One vibrant, holy, Catholic and Apostolic Church in Lawrence County. Help us to revive and strengthen our Catholic faith for generations to come. One baptism, one faith, one family. Holy Spirit Parish. So let us together pray for the wisdom and guidance of the Holy Spirit as we pray together. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen. And so we began the journey in prayer, striving always to hear and follow God's plan that would best serve the gospel message and our parish. It became clear that we needed to go in a direction that would further the mission in unity. The plan needed to provide a strong foundation in faith, like the trunk of the tree, that could be passed on to future generations, while also providing for vibrant growth as the flourishing leaves for Holy Spirit parishioners today. With that vision in mind, we moved forward. And we listened to your voices. Thank you for answering survey questions and participating in conversations. 
we heard a collection of voices reminding us of needs, such as, I have a hard time finding a place to park. Will the buildings be easily accessible for people with special needs? Can't we use what we have? Will this attract young people? I want to meet more young families. Can't we be under one roof to get to know each other? We need a building that is energy efficient and maintenance free. All these were important voices that spoke to us and continued to speak to us as we go forward. And there was one more voice from the outside of our control, in pink on the right-hand side, that continued to remind us of a very important consideration. Soon, there will be less priests. Presently, in the Diocese of Pittsburgh, we have 132 priests under the age of 80, serving the 57 parishes in the diocese. Priests can retire at the age of 70, only one priest will be ordained this year. When we began in 2018, we had five priests, four active priests, and one retired priest. Now we have three priests. And our priests are not only staying daily mass, but they also have sick calls, funerals, weddings, baptisms, confessions, mass visits to our nursing homes, hospital calls, and appointments with individuals. There are responsibilities at the college, in our CIA, and helping people with annulments. Father Mack has responsibilities as the chaplain for the FBI. In 10 years, there will be only 73 priests in the diocese, assuming all remain healthy and are able to fulfill their full ministry. In 20 years, we will only have 43 priests. We need to continue to pray for more young men to respond to the call of Jesus to the priesthood. Realizing that soon we will be down to one priest, we must do things differently. Together we can do this, just like we did when we pulled together during the pandemic. Remember how the parking lot brought us together? Members from all seven former churches came together at the Sears parking lot. Lectors, Eucharistic ministers, cantors, singers, technology folks, and traffic control. People got to know each other. Even local businesses supported our efforts in letting us be there. We even had a man enter RCIA from listening to the Mass as he headed into Lowe's. This past year, his wife also entered the church. The pandemic united all of us in Lawrence County and beyond. As you can see, most of our parishioners are located north of downtown Newcastle. Yet, we are spread all over this area which covers most of Lawrence County. From the 2010 census, Catholics are the largest single denomination, second only to those unclaimed to having a religious affiliation. We have the opportunity to invite, engage, and attract people to be active participants in our Catholic faith. We are encouraged in the growth of baptisms and marriages. Though the numbers are small, they signal a positive direction. We are more than we imagine. These are our demographics. Our average age is 51. 34% of our parishioners are under the age of 40. We have nearly 2,000 parishioners under the age of 20. We have a lot of life to offer. In the past two and a half years, 277 families have joined our parish. Our ministries help us attract new people and serve our community. Here at Holy Spirit Parish, we have over 70 ministries in which our friends and neighbors participate, helping us to be a vibrant community. We have youth and adults involved in the liturgy as altar servers, ushers, lectors, musicians, Eucharistic ministers, sacristans, people who volunteer on the worship committee, and those who decorate the churches. These are our friends 
who every week help us to have a meaningful worship experience. To support our youth, we have many volunteers who work with our children from kindergarten through high school, teaching them about our faith and helping to nurture in them a relationship with Jesus. To help the financial needs of the parish, people work tirelessly to help fundraise. This includes running raffles, fish fries, breakfasts, the drive through dinners, the gift shop, and making pierogies, stuffed cabbage, nut rolls, and Easter bread. We are active in the community through our outreach activities. We have numerous ministries whose purpose is to meet the physical and spiritual needs of all people in Lawrence County. The Food Pantry, St. Vincent de Paul Society, Soup Ministry, Card Ministry, Angel Tree, Confirmation Blankets, EMHC to Homebound and Nursing Homes, Grief Support, RCIA, Preparation for Sacraments, Welcome, Return, Phone, Connections, Engage, Illuminate, Prison, Bible Study, Gospel Reflections, Eucharistic Adoration, Prayer Warriors, Seven Sisters, Rosary, and Live Streaming of Masses. Holy Spirit is a vibrant community where we can share our time, talent, and treasure with those around us for the good of all. We treasure our children. We need to help them develop a strong relationship with Jesus. At any given time, we are only one generation from losing our memory and experience of Jesus Christ. We recognize we need to do something dramatically different if we want a strong, healthy Catholic faith for tomorrow. For all our children, we are moving to using Gospel Weeklies. Each session expounds on the Sunday Gospel. It's an encounter with Jesus that our children need. All of our middle school students will be in small groups. Adults who are willing to journey with students as they develop a relationship with Jesus will be the mentors. There will be large group gatherings, a new two-year confirmation program, as well as service opportunities. We know that there is no silver bullet to engage our young, but we have an obligation to try, and we're excited and up to the challenge. We need to invest in our future. So, where do we stand financially? Although we have not fully reached our budgeted income, we have reduced our expenses. Presently, we're $30,000 to the good as we enter the last two months of the fiscal year. We hope that we will break even as of June 30th. If we look at the prior two years in comparison to the present, please remember we received PPP loans in the 2019-2020 year and the 2020-2021 fiscal years which enabled us to end in the black. In 2021, we would have had a deficit if we have not had these grants. So with this information, the excitement of our ministries and efforts to unite us, our growing ministries, exciting changes in our faith formation program, along with the decreasing numbers of priests and our small margins, how do we move forward? We see three options. One, stay as we are. Two, upgrade an existing building. Or three, move in a new direction. Presently, with the seven churches, these fixed expenses, which include or represent taxes, utilities, snow removal, and grass cutting, we spend about $37,700 per month. These costs add up to almost half a million a year. Can you imagine what we could do with the savings from these expenses if we would eliminate them? These are just four items under fixed costs, and it does not include unexpected expenses such as leaky roofs or extraordinary items. Status quo is unsustainable. We have a small maintenance crew, and they are stretched 
running around to the various sites. We have 59 parcels of land and 27 buildings, seven of which are churches. Not only financially is this unsustainable, but soon we will have only one or two priests. They can't run from these different places. Therefore, we ask two independent firms to complete a feasibility study. This study was funded by an anonymous donor. Desmone Architects and Jerry Horn Construction were asked to prepare a study to examine the challenges and benefits of providing seating for 1,200 parishioners in a single location. Remember, we need to build with one priest in mind. Ideally, a school for faith formation and offices would be within walking distance. All Holy Spirit buildings were considered, but only a handful were found to meet the parish's needs regarding land size, potential to expand, quality, location, and more. Four existing churches were selected for the study. St. Camillus, St. Joseph the Worker, and St. Vitus were chosen as potential sites for alteration and expansion. In addition, St. Mary's was included in the study to determine the estimated cost to maintain and improve this campus. The report looks to assign a probable cost to maintaining, renovating, and adding seating to the existing churches. Using data from the 2016 Facility Condition Assessment, Site Plans, and Site Visits, we will see each location has its specific challenges and benefits. Our first site is St. Camillus. The building type is rated as Level 3 meaning the building materials were not chosen for long-term use. The study found the existing structure needs upgrades internally, adding a fire sprinkler system, and improvements to the lighting and electrical services. Externally, the site would require repaving, replacing the existing building joint sealants, and a new stormwater system, and replacing the concrete joint sealants. This building would currently seat 550 persons. Two options for expansion were looked at. Option one was to expand the church into the gym. The study looked at it structurally, interior renovation, landscape, and parking. This option would increase the capacity to 1,174 persons. The benefits are that there is an existing rectory and hall. However, because of its location, the property may have a high potential for resale. The challenge is, it is landlocked. The site size cannot accommodate the expansion and a separate office building, school addition, and parking are needed. In addition, traffic congestion at the intersections would need to be corrected. Option two would be to expand the church to the right of the sanctuary into the existing parking lot. It would add 624 seats, also creating 1174 seats still short of our goal of 1200. The benefits are the same, as are the challenges. There is just not enough room on the property to do what is needed. The estimated cost for this work, both the existing cost plus the new cost of adding the stormwater system for additional parking, the new office building, fire sprinklers, lighting, plumbing, HVAC, plus the school needed for faith formation equals $14.9 million. Unfortunately, due to the size of this site, the necessary expansion cannot be accommodated. Next, the St. Joseph the Worker Campus was reviewed. This property could support expansion. However, the study found the type of construction on the site is also type three, materials chosen for lower first cost and not long-term use. St. Joseph the Worker currently seats about 750 persons. The existing church needs interior and exterior updates. Internally, it needs updating to add fire sprinklers and an elevator. The electrical system HVAC and accessibility would require upgrades and both the sanctuary level and basement level would require replacement of its floor surfaces. 
New sanctuary and basement ceilings would also be required to provide insulation for energy savings and sound deadening. Externally, accessible parking adjacent to the entry and installing new stairs and retaining walls would be necessary. Additionally, unless sold, the brick veneer at the school would need cleaned and pointed, and it would be necessary to replace wood infill panels at the school. Renovating and expanding St. Joseph the Worker would accommodate 1,266 persons. However, the current school and convent are used for special need individuals and would remain as a vital service to the community. Therefore, office space and school space would need to be considered. The benefits. The size of the site and the existing architecture can accommodate the necessary expansion. Three exits can be improved to relieve traffic congestion. Currently, the lower level is a successful outreach for families in need. Finally, the close proximity to 422 interchanges provides access. The challenges we face include demolition of the existing rectory to allow for the expansion of the church, creation of additional parking, which would require additional stormwater capacity. Finally, Alteration and demolition will often expose environmental issues which must be addressed. The cost of this work is estimated at $15.8 million. This includes the existing building costs, including the demolition of the present rectory and renovating and expanding the existing church. The new stormwater system, landscaping, more parking, a new office building and school, installing an elevator in the church, the fire sprinkler system, and upgrades to the plumbing, HVAC, and lighting. Another site was St. Vitus. As you can see, there are a number of parcels of land with this church site. These will have to be combined to allow construction of additional parking and offices. The study rated the building as Type 1, that is, higher quality materials were used. It has a present seating capacity of 690 persons. The building presently needs internal upgrades, such as adding fire sprinklers, updating the sound system and accessibility, and restoring or replacing vulnerable church surfaces and finishes showing signs of wear. Continued use of the school building will require replacement of the school generator. Externally, both the school and church need replacement of building exterior joint sealants and the site concrete repairs. Exterior metal surfaces at the church and school will require painting, as well as repairs to the windows and parking. To meet the required additional seating, a mezzanine or balcony could be added. This would increase the total seating capacity to 1,125 persons. Associated items would be foundation reinforcement, parking, addition of an elevator and stairs, relocation of the confessionals, ushers room, and restrooms. The benefit. The church is appreciated for its architectural aesthetic and it has an existing school. The challenges. Inadequate parking and narrow streets site does not allow for sufficient office space. The new seating capacity cannot be expanded beyond 1,125. Additionally, the mezzanine would require eliminating the present confessional and adding an elevator and second egress stair. Adding the mezzanine has the highest cost to create more seating with the lowest square feet gain. There is a definite need to provide more parking. Adding more parking will increase city taxes and stormwater issues. Unfortunately, if we are to consider this site, the school will need to be renovated and maintained to a higher standard. Finally, the building of the mezzanine alters the intended architectural aesthetic. The building and the surrounding parcels will be a challenge to sell. The cost of the existing building, which includes the repair or replacement of the exterior paving around the school, renovating the existing school and replacing the generator and the church exterior and interior finishes to match the new plus the new mezzanine with its supports, the elevator, confessional and restrooms, the fire sprinkler system, 
lighting, HVAC for the additional parishioners, and parking equals $10.4 million. St. Mary's site was also addressed. St. Mary has a seating capacity of 544 persons. The existing updates needed internally are adding fire sprinklers, restoring or replacing interior valuable finishes at the church and parish center. The mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems would require detailed inspection, maintenance, and repair or replacement of any defective systems or components. Externally, exterior concrete maintenance and replacement of joint sealants throughout the campus. Restoring painted exterior building surfaces on church and other buildings. Repairs to the brick lintel at the CCD building. Replacement of the HVAC at the CCD building. St. Mary's campus has the potential to be the full religious education center for Holy Spirit Parish. This site will be kept for its historical significance. It is the oldest of our churches. It is in the center of our territory and has the potential to be where our outreach to the poor would be held. This location also has the rectory that will be occupied by the priests. The Adoration Chapel is located here as well as our largest hall. The costs associated with maintaining this site with the existing cost to the church, the repair and or replacement of the roof underlayment, the repair of the stained glass windows, interior maintenance of the plaster, repair and repaint, the cleaning and sealing of the concrete sidewalks and the repairs needed in the rectory. The rectory was built before interior electricity was provided. It needs repairs, plastering and painting on the third floor, the roof, soffits, fascia, and gutters need replaced, and the electrical system needs updated. These costs equal $683,000 and additional funds of $750,000 are added to the estimate to develop the campus, equaling $1.43 million. These are the costs associated with St. Mary's and the options of updating an existing facility. As you can see, no existing site is capable of meeting our future needs as one parish. We must raise money to update any of these sites. With the three options of St. Camillus, St. Joseph the Worker, and St. Vitus, we are working with old construction. All these churches are over 60 years old, which burdens the next generation with the cost of maintenance of the older buildings. There are environmental and health issues, namely dealing with asbestos and lead-based paint, and yet there is still the absence of new technologies being included. Handicapped accessibility would be a compromise and not included in every part of the design. This presents an inflexible design in meeting our needs, such as the hearing impaired and meeting spaces. Finally, none of the renovated properties would allow a low utility cost, energy efficient building with the features necessary to welcome new generations while improving the experience of those with special needs. Since the Catholic Church came to America, each generation has worked and sacrificed to prepare their parish for the next generation. Reworking existing structure is like pouring new wine into old wineskins. Both are ruined. Finally, we have also assessed new construction. This approach would meet our immediate needs with flexibility for the future expansion of both worship and the facilities that our vibrant collection of ministries dearly need. A new location is yet to be determined. We will need to build, not in a neighborhood, but where major roadways create easy access to the church for our entire parish. The benefits of this new building would be it will accommodate the church, offices, classrooms, and parking with area for expansion. A new structure will use utilities more efficiently and cost much less overall. There will be challenges in funding the construction, but this challenge can become an opportunity through a phased approach. After all the numbers and drawings, take a moment to rest your mind on this picture. 
To me, it beautifully captures the journey to a new building, especially designed for the parish now and in the future. I think of my own family's move from the house where my children were born to a new home. Maybe you've also experienced that. There's always a little sadness in packing up and leaving behind the place where your child took their first steps. But that's quickly replaced with the excitement of finally moving into a house with a kitchen that's laid out especially for your family's needs. You take what you treasure and with wisdom you design the exact space you need where your treasures can shine. And for Holy Spirit Parish, the most beautiful part of that journey will be that we would all be making this move together. We would all be saying our farewell to what was, and we would all be very carefully packing our treasures. And with the combined wisdom from all those voices of what we need, we would all be relocating them in a new church, especially designed for the present and future of Holy Spirit Parish. Keep this vision in mind as the presentation continues. Developing a new campus is a three-phase project. Phase one is obtaining the property and developing the site costing approximately $1,367,575. The second phase is to build the church with a mezzanine, basement, and office spaces for $7,655,080. The third phase is to build a multi-purpose building for faith formation and social space. This would be another $5,250,000. Phase one and two provides a new church campus plus St. Mary's. Design is specific to parish needs and vision. It would have a vestibule that enhances fellowship after Masses, better sound and technology, seamless handicapped accessibility, meaning that it would have a loop amplification system that connects to hearing aids, handicapped accessible bathrooms, handicapped parking near parish entrances, electric doors, and an elevator. It would serve many of the ministries. It would meet the seating capacity with one or two priests. It provides a common goal to work for, as well as it would be an attraction to draw people. It would give us a consistent future, no worrying about what building will close next. No major maintenance problems more efficient energy and lower bills, a combination of our past history and our coming future. So these are the costs we are looking at. And with the economy as it is with rising costs, each of these may also increase. St. Mary's, $1.4 million. St. Vitus, $10.4 million. St. Joseph, almost $16 million, St. Camillus, almost $15 million, also considering the fact that the site is not really appropriate. If we build something new, the phasing allows us the ability to do so when we're ready. How long will it take? It will take five to seven years if we begin now for phase one and two. During this time, we would continue to use St. Vitus and St. Mary's and possibly St. Camillus while the new church is being built. After the church is complete, St. Mary's would be able then to house all of faith formation until we have sufficient funds to build a multi-purpose building, which would be part of the phase three construction. We would then be able to reduce monthly fixed costs and save approximately $25,000 per month. 
In all cases, we need to start a building fund. This is critical. This shows the time frame to phase in the plan. Phase 1. Immediately, we would establish a building fund. Once the site is found, we would purchase the property and begin site development, a feasibility study to determine what would be needed in the new church and begin architectural plans. Phase 2 could begin as early as the summer of 2024. During this time, we would use St. Vitus and St. Mary's and possibly St. Camillus. Phase 3 could begin when sufficient funds are raised. We do have some money in reserve. We're looking to move the Capital Improvement Fund into the Building Fund, and some of the general savings will be used for Phase 1 and immediate repairs at St. Mary's. The Building Fund is extremely important because every penny remains in our parish for our parish needs, and we're not assessed or taxed on these funds. It is important to remember in all scenarios we must raise money. There is great concern that our young people are not present. Beginning a new church is part of a multifaceted approach in revitalizing the faith in our parish. But it's not the only thing we must do. That is why we are completely changing our faith formation program, offering many outreach opportunities to engage our young people and their parents in putting their faith into action. Being under one roof will be a major step in helping us be united as a one faith community, together forging a future of hope and opportunity. The new campus will mean no losers, all are winners. Design is specific to parish needs and vision. Youth are more likely to return to one building we call home. An attraction, come once to see and hopefully continue. Better sound and technology. Seamless handicapped accessibility. Loop amplification system, bathrooms, parking, and electric doors. A common goal to work to support. Consistent future. No worrying of which buildings will close next. No major maintenance problems. More efficient energy. Lower bills.
As promised, there's a lot of information. So I would ask you to pray about this, to think about it. Others, the council, we have been grappling with this for a long time. We have become so used to it all. But to hear all the information for the first time, it's a lot to swallow. So I encourage you to pray about it, think about it. And then next Thursday, after you've had a time to even go online, go back, maybe there was a section you said, I didn't quite hear what they said. There's a part I'm more curious about. You might have your own ideas. Well, did they consider this? Did they consider that? Write that down, think about it, and then come next Thursday to our parish hall at St. Mary's and we will have a listening session. But tonight, it's time to think and pray. And before we say good night, I would just like to once again, thank you for coming. Thank those of you who are viewing online for doing so. I'd like to thank Dr. Linda Ritzert and Father Kisler for being here this evening and for our council for all of your hard work, dedication and devotion to doing this. Uh, we are very blessed to have such dedicated folks who have been grappling with this for so long. Also next Thursday, we will have the architect and the builder who helped with the study. So we'll have the people present for the questions. And we will lead this session as we did with the listening sessions that the Holy Father suggested that we do for his synod, respectfully, openly, and honestly. Because in the end, we want to make our Savior proud that we are his people. His prayer before he died for our salvation was that we would be united as he and the Father and Spirit are one. Sin divides, love unites. God is love. And so let us follow his example. Let us be open to his grace. And let us turn to Our Lady before we conclude with our parish prayer and call upon her who was the spouse of the Holy Spirit that we might be granted the spirit to do God's will and not our own. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. Lord Jesus, you told us where your treasure is, there your heart is also. The parish of Holy Spirit treasures our faith in you, our children, and every person who gathers here. Help us to have the courage to sacrifice, to love, and to build in your name. Guide us by your spirit of wisdom, give success to the work of our hands, and keep us in your peace. Saints, martyrs, and Mary, our mother, pray for us. Amen. And may the Almighty God grant us a restful night and a peaceful death, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And go in peace. Thank you. Let's thank our council for all their hard work. Thank you.